The ball game is an encounter with the self. The attentive self, defined by reaction to others. I call it the self with others. It requires discipline, calm, and absolute self-acceptance, for in it the performer encounters the totality of the material she has to work with as she grows towards being the artist she aspires to be, her own activated body-mind. The ball has no opinion, it has no will, no intention. The ball, as it flies from person to person, carries only and exactly the energy that has been given to it by its thrower. The ball makes visual, in its velocity and trajectory, the instructions that were, wittingly or unwittingly, given to it by the person who threw it. Thus the ball makes concrete the action of the thrower. It is a quantum of communication across space from one person to another. It is the energy that one person gives to another, energy that the catcher receives, absorbs, transforms and passes on to someone else. Usually I run the ball game in a circle, though there are variations to this. The circle is precise in shape and of a size which, though it can later be varied, initially should permit the ball to be thrown easily, not requiring a force that would cause the catcher to be intimidated. From this basic structure, the ball game grows. Each throw is a gift passed from one performer to another, a gift that can be easily caught at about chest level. It is thrown with sufficient force to travel across the circle. The catcher receives the energy of the ball and passes it on to someone else in the form of a throw which is a gift. She does not have to consider who to throw it to, for it's the job of everyone in the circle to be ready to receive the ball whether or not they are already dealing with another ball. If you throw to someone who is already dealing with another ball, you give them the opportunity to deal with two at once. That is another form of gift. The catcher simply receives and throws. Impulse, reaction. There's no need for thought. No need to consider who ought to get the ball next. You cannot make a wrong choice. You cannot make a right choice. You need not make any choice. Simply catch and throw. Catch and throw. The ball is often dropped. This is irrelevant. The ball game is not a learning to catch exercise. We are looking for the flow of impulse to reaction. That flow is as possible to observe and manipulate when the required action is to retrieve a ball from the floor, as it is when the ball lands easily in the hand. Dropping's always fine, for it requires precise and immediate readjustment by the catcher of her reaction to the impulse, for the impulse becomes unexpected and unknowable at the moment when she drops the ball. At the moment of dropping, or potential dropping, the exercise becomes absolutely live. The ball game trains performers to be live. What matters is how the performer works with the interplay between catching and dropping, between the easily caught and the impossible, between the routine and the extraordinary. Not whether or not she drops the ball. It's not what we do, it's the way that we do it. Usually I will set a focus for the ball game on each specific occasion. I might ask the group to pay attention to the rise and fall of the energy as the balls fly. I might ask them to work specifically on allowing themselves to be calm amid the apparent chaos of multiple flying balls. I might ask them to work with choreographies to rehearse the sequencing of thoughts. For example, that they clap before catching, jump, touch the floor and spin after throwing. I might ask them to work with their hands behind their backs to allow them to experience vulnerability and help them realise how little they need to defend themselves from the exercise. 
Always, I ask them to look for their pleasure. And I expect them to work with the exercise without opinion. As there is no possibility of ever getting this exercise right, and no such thing as getting this exercise wrong, provided the performer is actually doing the fundamentals of the shared task, there is neither space for nor purpose in opinion. There's nothing to have an opinion about. The ball game asks performers to pay attention to reality. Catch and throw, catch and throw. There is no time to think about how things ought to be, or who one ought to be. What should have happened a few seconds ago. These things have no relevance in the ball game. And if you spend your time thinking about them, the ball will remind you to pay attention. Sometimes gently by landing at your feet. Sometimes less gently by slamming into your body or face. The ball game requires each and every performer to pay continual attention to the immediate reality of the exercise and indulgence in opinions about the self, about others or about the exercise will distract the performer from paying attention to that reality. The ball game is a training in paying attention to reality. Often I will stop the exercise to allow the accumulated tensions to dissolve. Often I will coach from within the flow of the exercise to refocus the group, to refine the focus, sometimes to create laughter and dissolve any accumulating stress. Always there is room for laughter in the exercise. Though I guide and focus the exercise, each person experiences their own ball game on each and every occasion, provided they pay the required attention. Without that attention, it is nothing. It's just people throwing a ball. But with that attention, the ball game is an encounter with the self. The attentive self, defined by reaction to others. I call it the self with others. It requires discipline, calm, and absolute self-acceptance. For in it, the performer encounters the totality of the material she has to work with as she grows towards being the artist she aspires to be, her own activated body-mind.